Well, here we are then, at the Scar Generator. And we have a, a free flat cannon, excellent. And a new item that you might have seen me spawn in the bonus segment. This is the Searchlight. It's like the flashlight, but with a wider radius, and the battery lasts for like an hour instead of nothing. So that's fun. Also, on the ground here, some jump boots. We'll, we'll go ahead and grab them, I guess. Do some jumping. Maybe Who some booting. Who knows? Surprisingly. Scar is still very good at dodging rockets. They're good at dodging pretty much everything. It's almost like when you program your AI to avoid dying, they can be pretty good at the job. And I dodge off the ledge. Uh, no, we don't want to use up all that anymore. So this is another part where they lock us into a combat arena, except, I'll be honest, it's a little not shit this time. Mostly because the arena is so open. Yeah. And it's also really cool looking. Look at that. Look at all that. It's great. Thing is, I don't want to run over some of these pickups yet. So I'm being a little careful with my footing. All right. Nope. Still another scar. The music went away. That means we fought all the scar. Oh, what's this music? What's this Terminator theme shit? Oh, it's him again. He's back. Possibly in black? Uh, he's more like gunmetal. Remember, Reckon. Don't dodge into the rockets. You know, that's that's pretty good life advice, I'd say. Turn that into a bumper sticker. Don't dodge into rockets. And we got him. Yeah, for all the uh, for all the build up and hype, he's really not that tough. He's not that tough. Um, he's still fairly intimidating, I, I guess. I don't know. He's, he's intimidating, like, he's just not tough. Crazy rocket launcher. That is built into his arm, cyber demon style. Yeah. That's right. a really, like, poor choice of modification. I don't actually think it's built into his arm. I think he's just holding it. I would hope so. How would he eat? Oh, why did it load a new level? When we are coming down from that elevator. That's a weird thing for- t oh. Everything's breaking, Skelzor. Now, I mentioned Terminator 2 in reference to that theme, however... Well, you know, now- look, they put us in a new level again. I mean, that is some impressive work, really. 
it is. For 1998, like, this shit is cool. And going back to, um... Where were we? We're, Whatever map I was talking about when I was was saying how they used a subtractive editing method, or a map-making method, this is literally just they had their floor, and then they made a giant sphere and pressed the subtract button. (laughs) <laughs> that's how they got this effect. It's a good it's effect. It's a good effect. And then look at these totally realistic, made by the lighting engine god rays. Look at that. They're not 2D animated textures at all. I mean, they're barely even animated, let's not kid ourselves. I mean, they, they're moving around to give the illusion of light. It looks nice. But, oh, why why did they give us this searchlight? Oh. Alright, now... We're inside the same mothershipy area. But... It's really dark. I mean... Can't see shit, Captain. Okay, let, let me give you the full illusion here. We, we have we have now entered the Doom 3 segment of Unreal. Yeah. Here, let's set brightness back to, like, a more realistic sort of thing. Oh, well, that's right. I have the, the gamma set on um, OBS itself, so you can't actually see this. Because, again, Unreal goes by darkening your actual monitor, not the game. Which so is pretty is, smart. This is still totally visible, but we'll, we'll use the searchlight to... Also, out. I think I have an explanation for that lighting error that we saw in the previous level. Okay. Uh, it was lighting for this state, and not the state that it should have been in? Mm, perhaps. Because uh, shooting a dispersion pistol at it, it did actually light up the stairs and the button. But, you know. Though I can say from first-hand experience, if you... I don't know if it would be the same in this case, but it might be because they're um, designated as movers, which is geometry that can move, surprisingly mm-hmm. enough. It may be the way they were intersecting with the floor. That could have been that too. Because I've had an issue similar to that in the Unreal Tournament 2004 editor, where I had a static mesh that was intersecting weird with the uh, the wall, and it was just a solid black mass. That's metal. So... We see these now. Um, these are, in fact, the luminescent scar. And instead of wandering aimlessly around like I did last time, we're gonna fight this mini boss, the ice scar. Ah, uh, the yes, acid dust uber scar. The result of, uh, the SCAR eugenics program. Yeah. And then, um, we're gonna go ahead and here. Which was locked previously, I remember. But now that we blew the ship all to hell, no one really cares if we go in here. Hmm. I mean, they might care, but... I think I've gone the wrong way then. Authorization granted. Activate the emergency power supply. How do we do that? We walk towards this thing. And watch this really complex piece of moving geometry happen. There we go. This is the auxiliary power supply. This, like, un- 
restrained beam of energy that anyone can walk into. Oh, but it's kind of high up. How could they get there? Like this. She's got a really have oh and s uh here here in the america we call that osha which is the same acronym but in a different order because we have to be different uh we could really go down do. this pit but we don't want to because there's no way back up but there you go that beam doesn't kill us one of the few beams of light in this game that does not kill you but it also does not make you stronger all right, so here, here's this. We are. This, this is the. Uh... I'm not sure what it's even called, really. Well, the important thing is this is. I believe this is the final level, or at least the lead up to it. Also. Basically. <clears throat> Listen to that synth. I love that sci-fi synth. I love it. I love this music. What happens when you jump down there? I wonder. Oh, there's an elevator back up. All right, ready when you are. There we go. I forgot you had to kill that guy to unlock the button. And then we see this. Yes. Unreal loves moving geometry. So are we in the like, visualizer dimension? Not quite yet. Okay. So there's some little alcoves with additional ammo. And an assault vest. And a um a light bridge that Halo would later steal. Sure would. And I believe we'll uh like you said, go down the visualizer. This is a really overly complex form of transportation. But it's better than another maze, I guess. Okay, so this is the actual final level, because I guess that visualizer thing took up most of the geometry and, like, memory assets. Yes, this uh, platform in the middle of a endless void, which is not actually endless, as uh, Reckon will demonstrate in a moment. Yeah, some sort of weird thing with pulses of light going to it. And you made you made this comment last time we had to record this. Um, mm -hmm. Out of nowhere, the scar suddenly doing like alien style bio mechanical stuff. Yeah, there's biomechanical architecture. There's zero precedent for this. It just someone thought it would be neat, I guess. Which, okay, I don't know. Interesting. I have spotted geometry off in the distance with my searchlight. Have you? Yes, I have. Where have you found this geometry? Okay, on the left side of the, like, where you came in, if you go out the left-hand doors to turn on your searchlight, there is, in fact, geometry. Somewhere out here. Oh, yeah, look at that. There's, oh, goodness. Oh, wow. What is this, I wonder? It's like a box, but... Yeah... Huh. Really bizarre. Now yeah, let's use our flashlight to show a shitty... Flashlight. Oh, we can turn them both on at the same time. But there's a good comparison of the searchlight and the, f the flashlight. Oh, neat. We can turn them both on. That's great. I don't know. I guess we're gonna ch check that out in the bonus section. We sure are. But Don't not we... before we uh, see the justification for the sudden shift in uh, architecture style. Yeah. Now, it is important to remember, uh, to for, for me to reiterate, that the Scar are technically some sort of weird insectoid race. Sure are.
Oh, uh, we get to see this fancy ass door again. Oh yeah. Here, let's. Sci-fi loves its sphincter doors. <laughs> They've probably used up like a third of the level's geometry on this one door. Oh, vertex budgets. Now we get some jump boots. Super jump boots, and we're gonna go ahead and activate these right the heck now. We sure are. And I'm gonna quick save in case I jump into those glowing green energy beams again. Alright. Let's find out what the cause of all the- oh. Hello, missus. So, you know, suddenly we're just doing the ending of Aliens. Yeah, except we don't get a power loader. I forget, was the Queen ever actually mentioned before this point? No. Um, in, in this level, she is technically referred to as the Source, I suppose. So, she has some leaping, some melee attacks that we don't want to get hit by. Shield, she shoots lasers. She gets really upset when you kill the little, uh, face huggers that spawn. Yeah. Now we have one of those around. And she also can teleport. And Skelzor, as you found out, she can telefrag you. She sure can. So it's kind of a safe bet to just want to jump whenever she teleports, just in case. I need to find some health pickups, because I'm getting wrecked. Now, Ow. it's it's difficult probably to tell as you, the viewer, but when she does things, she kind of makes the entire screen shake. And again, this is actually something that affects your own movement, so... It sure does. And I just got telefragged again. Oh, two for two. Two for so, like, two. Trying to get a back onto this platform can be a bit aggravating with all the screen shake. Okay, I have a plan. Oh, hello. So yeah, I guess this is Mrs. Scar herself. Uh, as far as we know, the only female Scar we ever meet. And I'll be honest, that one female Nolly we heard about? Probably a bit nicer. Probably. I mean, let's not jump to conclusions oh, here. There we go. She is dead. The Scar Queen Aren't is you dead. Lucky? Long live the Scar Queen. Can't get too much of a good look at her here, but we'll give it a shot. Oh, you need to show off the the thing that Yeah, we will. Was quite humorous. So she definitely has the scar face with the tusks and the green eyes and whatnot. Same sort of legs. Did you degrade? Weird things, our jump boots are still trying to go off. There we go. But, uh, yes. So, during the fight, if you kill any of her little children that spawn, uh, she goes, rah, rah, does that noise that you probably heard, and makes it scream shake. Even in death. She gets pissed. Even after her corpse despawned? She's a dedicated parent. Very. She's... Nothing if not good at her job. It's tough being a single parent in space. It is. Oh yeah, and now we get to see the slowest door in the game. It's a very slow door. And here we go. A scar is... Oh, don't look at that, don't pay any attention to that. Wow, look at this nice scar ship that's weirdly framed off to the left of the screen. Oh no! Oh, no, you didn't see that. You didn't see the missing piece of... 
fine. Seems like there's been a bit of a glitch. I have experienced the exact same problem. Oh. It's still there, apparently. Eh. Eh. Okay, we can't... we can't do it. So this is a real scar vessel that's gonna hopefully take well, us back to Earth, right? It's gonna... It, well... Anyway, let's uh, board there's, it. There's Napali, there's its two moons. Jump boots are still going off. Thanks, programming. And we'll watch this. But for the most part, this is... this has been unreal. I really uh, like this game. Yes, it is a good game. Although the Star have strange notions about how ships should exit other ships. Yeah, that weird little crisscrossy bit, some off-center tubes. It's, it's like some rock. It's almost like the Scar were really proud of the fact that they could suddenly code cutscenes into their... <laughs> yeah. How weird. Oh, and we don't pay any attention to the shadow of our own player model we just saw because the camera that we're viewing is actually us, the player, again. Don't worry about it, it's fine. So we have some narration that I'm going to read because it might not show up on the video. The Scar skate pod has broken free from the planet's gravitational pull, barely, yet its fuel has depleted and you drift aimlessly. And I went off about this earlier on the first try, but IT apostrophe S is not and will never be possessive. From where many have died, you have escaped. You laugh to yourself. <laughs> so much has happened, but little has changed. I don't know, we killed a lot of aliens. I didn't do that before. Uh, maybe that's what we were in jail for, though. Before the crash landing, you were trapped in a cramped cell. Now, once again, you are confined in a prison. Sucks. Yeah. Nine Inch Sci-Fi was really big on downer endings. But you feel confident that someone will come upon your small vessel, eventually. And we will see if that is the case if I play the expansion pack. Probably will. Until then, you drift and hope. I mean, yeah. Oh, can we talk about the, uh, the spinning asteroids? I was hoping we didn't have to. But... <laughs> Look at the amount of effort they put into making them spin. Yup. To be continued. Ah, uh, right. a depressing so, ending, just like, uh, you know, another game, what was that one called? Dark Souls! Dark Souls, that's it! <laughs> so, for all intents and purposes, this is the end of Unreal, the 1998 first-person Dark Souls. <laughs> Dark Souls! <laughs> but I hope, by now, it's less of just... I mean, it's it's obviously still just a running joke, but it's they're very similar games in presentation. There's a lot going on behind the scenes of each that you aren't explicitly told. And I mean, okay, Unreal has its its you know audio logs or not the text logs and stuff, but it still has a lot of really, really well done environmental storytelling with a lot of the levels and how the As we saw. the Scar influence is just layered so heavily on top of what you can easily tell is the original Nali imagery. There's a lot you can tell from the decor of a lot of levels, and I think that's very, very nice. It's a very excellently done effect. But, I mean, you know, game's something over. we don't see. Yeah. You don't see it a lot. And it's something that a lot of smaller indie games that have come around that are like, oh, we're like Dark Souls. It's something they haven't really understood 
that it's more than just being a difficult game. You have to, uh... You have to know what you're doing with the, the world you've created, and Unreal really knows what it's doing with the world it created. Sure, in some parts they're a little eager to throw in cool sci-fi tropes, and it's a little in incongruous in parts, but I don't know, that's part of the charm, I guess. Unreal still has a very solid sense of identity. It certainly does. I don't know. Before we end this, do you have any parting thoughts in a similar or different vein? I mean, in, I, I'd like to part with something very witty and uh, some kind of very variation, but all I could really say is that this game's pretty rad. Yeah. It's... Check it out. I mean... You've seen all of it now, but you could mm. play it for yourself. Well, you could stop here and play the expansion for yourself. You could. Uh, and I'll say it right now, the expansion is a very, very good example of why sometimes cut content should remain cut. <laughs> You know, much uh, like Dark Souls, Unreal oh, had its fair here we share. Go. That's, we, Unreal had get its one more in before we finish this. <laughs> much like Dark Souls, Unreal had its fair share of cut and altered and just dropped levels. And okay. for the most part, you find those restored or finished in the expansion pack which was also handled by an outside studio. Epic didn't actually make it. Um, which could have been part of the issue, much like Dark Souls 2, the original <laughs> team, wasn't working on the game. And it feels a bit hollow in comparison. Oh, good God. Alright, time to get started on the supercut of you saying much like Dark Souls. I make no promises. <laughs> <laughs>